This time on shift points, we try and get the galaxy to a southeast gasser's race, and we run out of time. Thanks for joining. This week is a, we're kind of running out of time. If we're going to get this thing to the gassers like we said, like we've been saying for weeks that we're going to do, we got to get on it. So it's about 6.30 on Sunday morning. Uh, I'm going to get under this thing. I'm going to crawl under there. I'm going to grease everything. I'm going to put uh, grease in the rear end, grease in the transmission. We're going to oil the engine, put water and antifreeze in the engine, have all that ready so we can kind of do an initial check for any sort of leaks. Then I'm going to put this thing on the ground, I'm going to back it outside, I'm going to wash it. And later today, Jackson is going to come, he's going to start cleaning it while me and Dad run brake lines. So we're kind of all hands on deck, we're going to have everybody in here kind of working on it at the same time. So we're going to work on brake lines and all of that. But like I said, first things first, we got to put the motor mount nuts back on, that's important. You got to get everything greased, get it outside. So I guess it'll be the first time we get to see it with the wheels and tires on it on the ground, so that'll be kind of cool. Um, we're going to rinse under this thing. Jackson's got like an undercarriage sprayer. Uh, we're going to rinse under this thing, get all that junk out, and let it dry really good before we get under there, which should help us when we're running those brake lines. Uh, that would be really nice. So we're going to get on it right now. So we just run gear oil in the rear end of this thing. We run 75W90 in the rear end, and we had some of this 80W90 that we run in the transmission. Nothing special, just Napa store stuff. Um, why the difference? because we had some 80 W90 so we put that in the transmission and we bought some 75 W90 that's what we put the rear in just basically the same stuff um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil in this thing we got the Napa Gold these things are made by Wix so these are really good oil filters we use these on basically everything at this point we run those Napa Golds on them um, and I showed you guys when I bought this stuff I wanted to quickly remind you I've got to find it I have this oil, anyway, I don't know what it is. I have this oil that's uh, made by Lucas specifically for like classic cars. It's a high zinc oil uh, to protect the camshaft in this thing. I want to make sure all that stays good. Last thing we need to do is uh, is, is kill it <laughs> right on initial startup. So I gotta find that oil that's around here somewhere. I'm gonna go ahead and get that put in, put in it. Uh, and then we'll get the antifreeze in it and that'll be, that'll have the fluids wrapped up and we'll get the same on the ground. Found it. Lucas Oil Hot Rod and Classic 10W30 Motor Oil High Zinc. Lucas makes great stuff. We run their uh, fuel stabilizer uh, and injector cleaner stuff. We run that in absolute everything. It makes a big difference. Helps on fuel mileage and stuff. We've even seen that stuff bring dead gas back. Uh, Dad had an old motorcycle that would, that had dead gas in it, put a big dose of that Lucas in it, and he's able to just run it out and then put some fresh in it. So that's pretty cool. Lucas makes great stuff. It's the first time we're using their motor oil. Um, so I guess we'll find out how it does too. Man, this thing looks so good. We don't even have it lowered in the front yet or anything. But man, just changing the wheels and tires on this thing and changing that rear tire gives this thing a completely different attitude from what it was, especially with those 14 Narrows and the um, those old hubcaps that were on it. This thing, like I said, completely different. Uh, we're gonna end up lowering the front end probably about two inches. We'll do that. That'll probably be one of the last things we do. Uh, we actually had to take the jack stands out of the, off the axle housing, move them to the frame and let the axle housing sag so that we could get that water rear tire in there. And it just barely fit as far as getting it in. There's plenty of clearance on the width once it's in place, but getting it between the axles and the outer and the fender there was tight. So, but man, yeah, it looks so good. I'm really happy with it. We're gonna roll this thing outside and get it washed up and start letting it dry.
<laughs> it's all hands on deck. Jackson is back. Logan is here. Uh, we are working on getting this thing polished up. We wanted to work on the roof and stuff before we put it back up on jack stands. When we get it up on jack stands, I'm going to start putting emergency brake hardware on while they continue to clean. Um, I told you guys earlier that's why I got this done so that Jackson could go ahead and get started on it while it's a Sunday. Uh, it's like 2 o'clock at this point, something like that. 2 o'clock, we've been thrashing on it already. The car has already been completely clay barred. Me and Logan went around it, clay barred it, wiped it off, and then Jackson has already started on the roof. And uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to make a big difference. I'm very curious. This hasn't been wiped off or anything yet, but it's already looking pretty good in comparison. It was amazing how much just washing it changed things. You can literally see the dust and dirt getting washed off of the roof of this thing as I when I hit it with a pressure washer and then started cleaning it. So I'm very, I'm ready to see what this thing is going to look like once Jackson gets done with it. I'm going to see if we can get a light here and kind of see what all is on this paint uh, even before we uh, before we fully get on it and then see if we can kind of see what it looks like after he gets done too because I want you guys to be able to see all the work that Jackson puts into these things for us. So here we go, you can kind of, yeah, you can see all the, all the swirl marks and stuff that's all in that paint when we go over it with this light here. And then we'll, once we kind of go over it, once he goes over it, we'll show it again. Show you see the difference? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, it is super hazy. Yeah, this is going to be good. It'll be good, Jackson. <laughs> And look at this. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get it on camera, but you can see. Yeah, see if you can get up higher. So there's like this distinct line from where Jackson has hit it with the buffer and, and where he has it. It is amazingly different in the whiteness of this roof. Like it's like brown over there and it's actually becoming white here. This is, this is kind of crazy. I didn't expect this much of a difference in it, honestly. So these guys have been absolutely killing it. Uh, we got this thing back up in the air. Uh, I'm was starting to look at what do we need to do for the emergency brake cables, but Jackson was working on this. This is the pad of the buffer after doing just this top section of the door. Like that's how, and this is after we clay barred, we've cleaned, what else do we do to it? We've already done what, the- what, You washed it? Yeah, we washed it. it. Yeah, we did, a, we did a wash, a clay bar, you did first and coat detail, of... De, we wiped it down detailer. This is the cut. Yeah, so that's just crazy oh, to me. After the, yeah, that's, that's one cut. rag. Yeah, that's the rag after he's wiped this off after Jackson cut in the first time. Yeah, it's amazing how this is coming out. But if you guys want to check out the roof here, you can see the shine. We got that done before we got it jacked back up. And I am just... I'm just stoked. This is going to look so good. After seeing it with the wheels and tires on it, we stuck the hubcaps on. I'm going to save that till the end because I just I liked it so much. I'm going to wait till we get back on the ground to show you guys. But seeing this thing, kind of what it's going to look like when we're done, I am like completely re-energized on everything. Not that I really lost it or anything throughout, but like I'm just like wound up, excited to get this thing going down the road, and it's just going to look really, really good. So. We're going to keep working on this. I'll get, bring you guys back here and kind of show you the initial steps on the emergency brake cables and, and, and we'll be able to basically use the stock hardware, the lever and all that stuff. All that's going to be the same basically. So that'd be perfect. Well, today is the plan is to work on this thing some more. Dad's a little under the weather, so I don't know if he's going to make it out here to do a whole much, a whole bunch today. Uh, but Jackson and Logan, man, they worked on this thing yesterday and they really made a huge difference. There's still one more step to do to the top of this thing. I think the last step's just a wax. They've only done the first step going around the whole car on the hood and everything. And you can see what a major difference that is. And I think there's two or three more after this one. So I'm thinking this paint's gonna really clean up a bunch. You can actually see here, best I could figure this is from where the car cover that was on this thing for so long kind of rested. Uh, there's that spot there. There's a similar spot over here on this side also, right here. And then there's also a spot kind of right up here that you can see where it's been kind of faded through. And I think, like I said, I think that's from that car cover that was on this thing for so long. Uh, but so far, other than some just chips and scratches that are on this thing just from, 
you know, 60 years or however long it's been now. Yeah, almost 60 years um, of wear and tear on the paint. But in general, this is really, really good. So like I said, Jackson's going to work on that some more probably tomorrow. Um, the other thing that came day before yesterday, but I kind of got it installed and so got to looking at it, is I got a tack for this thing. So it's a auto meter super comp silver uh, it, I think it kind of goes along with everything pretty well even the bezel and stuff is basically the same uh, same as this as the trim over here you know across the dash and everything so it kind of just fits in here got that clamped onto the steering column here that's in place there I've just got to tighten these screws up to get it to where it doesn't do this so get that tightened up in place I think that's gonna look really good and it, you know, it's visible, but it didn't block any of the other gauges or anything. And it still gives me access to pull the air knob, so it opens up those uh, those flaps over there on the right hand side to get some airflow in here. So I've still got all of that available to me. I'm gonna get this tightened up, get this thing wired. Uh, this needs a, a ground the tack feed which I already have run in over there. Uh, tack feed uh, switch 12 volts and. Uh, of the light this has a light built into it so I'll have to get under here and kind of figure out the which one is the parking lights on the headlight switch here and tap into that and then run that wire in there so that it turns on when the rest of the dash lights turn on so that's kind of what I'm gonna work on at this point uh, dad like I said dad might make it out here in a little while not 100% sure so if he does then we'll kind of figure out some other stuff we ran into a couple issues uh, a couple more issues yesterday first off being that these brake lines are just kind of way too long if you run these where they're supposed to be right there I'll turn the light on do that you can just see how much too long they are and that's honestly a problem we've had with all of these kits so far and that's a little frustrating to me that um, that they're all just significantly too long because uh, this is this suspension the way the way we have it mounted with the jack stand sitting on the sway bar uh the sway bar the suspension's at its lowest point so this is at full travel and it's already this too much too long so that's a little annoying uh, we might give them a call and see if they can swap us some brake lines if we can get some shorter ones or something because those are just drastically too long the other thing that we ran into that we happened to notice yesterday was lug studs these lug studs when you put the wheel and tire on here they only engage the lug nut about halfway so these are too short this is something i did not kind of foresee at all didn't even think about it happening um so we're going to knock these out and we've been i talked to the nap store bobby up at the nap store i talked to him for a long time this morning trying to find something that would work um, and didn't come up with anything to be honest with you so I'm I don't know we're gonna be I'm hoping to get this thing in the gassers but I'd say there's a pretty good chance at this point just because of a few things that are piling onto us that that's not gonna happen but maybe hopefully I'm wrong I hope I'm wrong um, but we'll have to just see so I'm gonna get in here I'm gonna work on getting the tack wired up and get that just kind of cleaned up and done so it's out of the way um, I might start making the fuel line that runs from the carburetor down to the fuel pump, something like that. Um, just kind of just work on it the best I can here. All right, I got this thing wired up and connected up. You can see that I got the battery hooked up. You can see, hopefully, yeah, you can see that the light's working. I've got that hooked up to the parking lights over here on that switch. So that comes on on the initial click and all the way out to the headlights. And the only other thing until we get this thing ready to run that kind of tells me that everything's working how it's supposed to is that if I flip the switch on, it does zero itself out. So I'm thinking I'm getting getting the signal and the switch 12 volts that I need. Um, I went ahead and put some of that loom on this and have a zip tie here just keeping that held up in position and that's running up under here to the dash. And then like I said, the one wire is going to the headlight switch for the lights one wire is tapped into the same place i'm getting switched 12 for the fan relay um the tack wire that i ran in and then i just extended that wire and hooked it all the way up to the battery to make sure that i had a good ground so that is all done that's a nice little piece there oh, horn works um the uh the reason we wanted to put a tack in this thing was to check uh those the new springs that we put into the um that we put into the distributor to make sure that that timing curve and everything is kind of working out it's supposed to we can check the timing 
uh, with the time and light and we'll be able to get a really nice accurate uh, look at the um, at what RPMs it's getting to all, getting the timing with this tack here this autometer deal so that's gonna look it looks good should be functional and that horn blowing is actually a good thing it tells me that that relay is getting power like it's supposed to be because it was hooked into that um, into that um, um, voltage regulator that was mounted onto the radiator cradle there so that is working properly so well there it goes gotta get in the right spot apparently hmm. weird anyway there it is so dad came out um, one thing that we ran into uh, yesterday while we were looking at the rear brakes on this thing I was getting the emergency brake stuff kind of figured out the um, the brake cables, the emergency brake cables, these guys right here that have the sheathing, that have the wire, the, uh, the cable that runs through them, as you can see right there. So these are actually, if you mount this side on the side where the stock ones were mounted, they're actually too short for them to clip in at the caliper. So we're going to end up making some new mounts um, so that we can... Uh, so that we can clip them onto the frame and onto the caliper so they're supported really well on both ends. Uh, so Dad came out and kind of gave me some guidance on what I needed to do. He found this angle iron. I'm going to take and I'm going to drill these holes into the center of this angle iron, get these cut off, and then get them cleaned up because he's going to go under there and actually weld that when he's feeling a little better. So I'll get these cut off, or actually first off, while I've got a good handle here, I'm going to put these in the drill press, get these holes drilled. I'm going to drill them a 1730 seconds. This guy measures like um, 523 and the hole in the caliper measures like 552. It's, they're, it's kind of odd sizes. Uh, so 1730 seconds is kind of right there in the middle of that. That should allow these fingers, how this is made, should allow these fingers here to clip into that really well, no problem. Um, and also, but also have enough there to where this will actually feed into it, no problem too. So I'm going to take this angle back here and get these holes drilled and get that ready to go. So I did end up having to go back and drill these holes one size bigger. These are still hot, so I'm grabbing the pliers. Um, I went from the 17 30 seconds, I went to 35 60 force. The 17 30 seconds was just a little too tight. So the 35 60 force was what that needed um, to get this to clip in, no problem. That goes in really well now, uh, and there's enough there to, uh, uh, to make sure that they latch in really well. Um, so you can see those turned out pretty good. So when Dad's getting back out here we'll get him to weld these in place onto the frame so that it'll uh so that we can get those mounted up uh the next thing i'm going to do now is since we got i was finally able to get online and find some lug studs this morning i'm going to go back here and knock these lug studs out of the back of this thing um uh, dad's got this big he knocked that first one out we had to use this big piece of uh steel stock and a big hammer to get these out they're really in place so go ahead and go knock those out too Alright, so it's just me again today. Um, I'm going to start trying to work on running these brake lines. Um, normally with something like this, Dad's usually here to kind of guide me and make sure that I don't screw anything up. But like I said, he's not really feeling super great again today, so I'm on my own. So let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm always nervous about doing stuff without him to kind of just make sure that I'm not missing something. Uh, but what we're going to do first off is come off of this proportion valve. The proportion valve here, it's got one line here that's going to come over here to the driver's side, front brakes. This line here is going to go down uh, around the cross member there and then uh, go over to the passenger side brakes. Uh, then the, there's the one line out the back that will go to the back brakes. I'm going to start with running this one because it's going to be kind of the shortest one. I think I can just come out of here, run it straight back. 
Uh, there's a there is a like a block back here, a junction block that was back here. The stock one, I'm gonna get in here and pull that off too, um, and just get rid of that all together. Don't need it. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna come here, come out, go back down and then straight out here to this side once I've kind of got that where I think it needs to be then I can come over to here to the other side and start running it down so I'm gonna work on that and kind of get going what I'm gonna use for the brake lines on this is something we haven't actually used before uh, but it's this copper nickel alloy uh, it says a little expensive a little pricey but it's really flexible really malleable and it's supposed to lack a lot more corrosion resistance uh, than just the regular old brake line so this is what we decided to use on this. We wanted to try it. So I'm going to get the flare tool out and then get started on this and see if I can make this and not make a mess. <laughs> All right. I think the first one I'm going to call a success. <laughs> uh, I got it coming out here. comes out of the proportion valve. It's wrapping around. And then this thing doesn't actually even go down uh, below the frame. It actually comes out below, above the frame. So this is wrapped around here. It's clearing everything. Nothing rubbing, clearing the steering box and all that good stuff. Come over here and see if I can see anything better. The only thing there is this is that cardboard shroud, uh, the dust shield here. Uh, so that's the only thing it's even close to. Come over here, and that's where it's laying. It's gonna come out once we get the brake line in. This thing will make it, you know, I'll straighten it up just a little bit more once I know kind of how that brake line's gonna land, the, the rubber line that has to go to the caliper. But I think in general, that's pretty good. So hopefully that'll agree. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to show, uh, because I forgot to do it on the first one because I was kind of focused on it. Uh, I've showed you guys using this brake tool before, brake line tool before. <laughs> um, but this stuff flares really easily and nicely. So if we turn this over, I've already got it set to zero. This is tight. Turn that to 316's operation one. Get that first one. This already has grease on it, or um, oil on it by the way. I didn't forget this time. And hit it with that operation two. Pull this thing out of here. So you can kind of see what a what a good looking flare that this stuff makes. And like I said, it's really easy to work with too. It's awesome. I'll tell you one thing, if I picked a good time to like kind of do this on my own, it's definitely when we started using this stuff. This stuff works so well. It's so malleable. You can bend it with a hand bender. I don't have it laying here. You can bend it with a hand bender really easily and any sort of big sweeps you can you can basically do by hand. It, it works that well. So I've got this side made and down going to that cross member. Now I've got to get under the car and get that loop made across the cross member and get it over here to this side. I got the passenger side just about done. I had to pull it, I had got it all bent and made. That's following the path of that cross member. It's gonna go over. That still needs it to come down so that it'll go into the, go into the place where the rubber brake line goes, but this, I had to get this straightened out enough so I could flare it and everything. So I had everything, everything run, all's good. I had to pull everything back out to flare that last end. But now we can, uh, now I'll get in here, get it bolted up in place. And so far it's looking pretty good. So fingers crossed that we keep going good this way. So I'm under here and I've got this run down. This is run the same way, best I can tell and remember, the same way as the stock brake line that came back here. It's run down the outside of the frame, around the body mount, through all of these clips that are already existing. And you can tell what a good job I did at cleaning this thing the other day. Through these clips up and over the frame, and then up this way and into that clip there. So now what I needed to figure out was um, what to do at this point. So at this point, what I'm, my plan is I'll cut this off here. I'm going to cut that off here. I'm going to put a T fitting here. I'm going to have one line that comes up and out across the cross member and over there to that caliper over there. I have another one that goes up and over this and goes over there. So the plan is, Dad came out here, <laughs> made a made a guest appearance here. Uh, he's feeling a little better, I guess, at this point. Um, but what we're going to do is, or what the plan is, is, let me get out of here. The... Uh, brake lines, the rubber brake lines that come off the calipers come with these L brackets here that fit a quarter twenty bolt like that. 
So my plan is to come up here into the frame and somewhere about here-ish, I'm gonna run, mount it to where the rubber brake line will come out the back of the caliper like this and then kind of come up and loop up to here to keep it away from the axle housing and everything. So somewhere in this area, I'm gonna mount that L bracket. I'm gonna drill and tap the frame with a quarter 20 and then mount that bracket up. Uh, so I'm gonna match these side to side as close as I can, kind of figure that out. So I'm gonna grab me a center punch here and get that drilled and then we'll go ahead and have it ready, get that tapped and see if we can mount the, hard, the rubber lines here so that I kind of have a target to get to from over there at the T and so I know exactly where I need to finish up at. I'm trying to use a new camera here today, so stick with me. Hopefully it's not too shaky or nothing too crazy. Um, so like I said, trying to figure that out. <clears throat> We're not going to make the gassers event, unfortunately. It's just, we just ran out of time, to be honest with you. There's just not enough time in the day to do everything we have to do sometimes. Um, so I'm going to get under here and get this fuel line fixed. What we decided to do is a little different than what I initially planned. And what we're going to do... I initially had a line that was run uh, that was basically going to run from the fuel pump right over back toward the headers away from the headers but toward them and go under the steering box and then come out about right there problem is um, if you put this wheel and tire on this thing and turn it that is almost exactly dead center of where that tire lands. If there was ever any sort of tire rub or something like that, it's going to land right in that junction. So this is why it's good that Dad comes out and checks on me sometimes before I make final decisions. So he'd come out to check on me on that. What our plan is now, I'm going to cut that line about right here, right there, and I'm going to add that junction there. So what we'll do, we'll have the junction there so you can still get to it pretty easily, but it's a little more hidden and you don't hit it or anything like that. So we'll do that. I'm going to cut this off, uh, add the union in there, and then the other thing we'll do, instead of trying to run that line up and over or up by the headers and through the, the, um, uh, the steering box, we're going to come out of the fuel pump here, go up here to the inner fender, and route it basically with that bundle of wires and take it down there between the inner fender and the firewall. This is going to do a couple things. First off, it gets us away from everything. The original fuel line I had to actually go in and cut basically right there at where it's coming over the frame, where it's going to come over the frame now. I had to cut it there to get it out. There were so many bends and kinks and stuff in it from the original Ford factory um, line it was it would have been impossible to replicate and plus after I cut it and pulled it and got everything out didn't even have a template anymore there's just so much stuff going on here <laughs> there's so much room in this car and there's so much space but everything lands in basically the same two spots on each side of the engine so with that being said this is gonna just take one of those things out of that I'm gonna move it up there it won't be near any heat it won't be near the headers anything like that it's gonna be completely separate uh, and running over there through the inner fender so that should function super well. That junction will be there on the outside where we can get to it easily, uh, which should be really nice also. So that's my plan. I'm going to get this routed. I'm going to get these ends flared. i got to pull that big line out, mark it, and cut it, and then flare it and put it back in place, and then flare both ends of this line and get it cut to the right length so that the union works properly. And that should finally finish up the fuel system on this thing. Um, then the only thing we'll need to do is add some length to the headers of this thing so that we can uh, drive it to the exhaust shop. So what we'll do is we're going to come off the collectors and add some extensions of, of exhaust uh, so that we can drive it up there. With these short tube headers we're just a little worried about 
possibly cracking a valve or something crazy going on uh, if we don't have that length on the exhaust. So we're going to do that before we ever drive it up there. So we're getting really close here. Uh, I hate that we're going to miss the gasser event in this thing. We're still going. We're still going to be filming. By the time this comes out, we'll have already put up that video, I hope, if everything goes to plan. Um, so go check that out if you haven't done it already. I did quickly want to show you what this fuel line looks like. Um, as you can imagine, it's pretty massive. This is where it'll junction up here. This will run down the length of the frame. There's a little kind of a kick out that goes around the body mount here. This is where it goes over the frame and then it follows the frame rail up and over and this will go over toward the fuel tank sitting in, right in the center. So just wanted to give you guys an idea of what this long section of fuel line looks like here uh, and how ridiculously massive it is. So I'll go ahead and show you kind of where this ended up this um, fuel line got it attached with a rubber hose down there runs up and over the inner fender and then down the inner fender back that direction that's going to give us good clean install as far as not having to deal with anything in this direction everything's attached up we've got to get everything tightened up and all that but for now I think that's going to basically do us for this week getting all that stuff done I'm hoping in the next episode that we'll be starting this thing. Um, if we can put a little bit of exhaust on this just to kind of help it out some, uh, to make sure nothing goes crazy, I think we can get this thing fired up. Um, we've got to do the emergency brakes. I've got to tighten up all the brake lines and we can bleed the brakes and all that stuff. If all of that goes pretty smoothly, we might be able to get that and maybe get this thing to the exhaust shop maybe. So we'll just have to kind of play it by ear a little bit and see how it goes. Um, that's going to wrap us up. Thank you guys for joining very much. Uh, hit that subscribe button when it pops up in the middle. Uh, this project's been a lot of fun. Uh, and by the time this comes out, Southeast Gassers, uh, Shift Points goes to the Southeast Gassers. That will be out. So head on over there and check out that video. There's going to be some good stuff going on there, some good racing and some different things like that. So check them out. If you haven't seen these guys, go to one of their events. You're going to want to see them. They put on a heck of a show. We'll see you next week.